Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Premier League predictions. I'm sure you'll see loads of these around, um, but I thought I'd do them anyway. Let's start a new channel. You know, it's something easy. Start of a new season. Why not? All right. We're going for all 20, obviously, from relegation zone to the winners. Um, I would like to say, first of all, I think the bottom 10 are going to be very close this year. Once again, when last year, a lot of teams were still in it were to go down by around March, April. I think that would be the same again this year. I think I just don't think the teams are good enough. I think there's I don't think there's any clear clear favourites not to go down in that bottom ten. I think any any one of them could do. Uh, but here's my predictions anyway. In twentieth, we've got Cardiff. Now mainly because of Neil Warnock who has not had the best of times in the Premier League. He's very good at getting out of the Championship, but once he gets in the top division, he can't handle it. He also has the face of a man who could kill off at any point. I also think that the players they've brought in, they've brought in a couple of Championship-based players, um, like Bobby Reid from Bristol City. It'll be interesting to see how they do, um, but I just don't think they have the firepower. I just don't think... I know they had automatic promotion last year, but I just don't think they're good enough. They never seem to me like a good Premier League team. You'd look at like a Villa or even like a Fulham who have come up last year as well. Even though they came up through the playoffs, you just feel like they got a better chance than Cardiff this year. At 19, we've got Watford. A uh, bit of a surprise, some some people might say. Uh, but I think they've got Javi Garcia in who came in around January last year. But again, it's one of those teams that they change their manager far too often. Why they got rid of Marco Silva? Just because, obviously, had those Everton links, but then they went away, and that was all a bit of a farce. They've got the Pozzo family running it, who's got flipping clubs in Italy, Spain. I mean, that's just a ridiculous business there. Um, and again, they finished bottom half last year. I think they'll struggle. I really do. I just don't think... They, I think the teams will stay up this year. I think they'll have settled teams. Um, and I just don't think Watford are a settled team. Obviously, lost Ricard Richarlison for 50 mil to Everton. Obviously, he was a, he's a good player. He's a young player. He didn't make Watford stay up last season. But I think potentially it could be a big miss considering they haven't replaced him either. At number 18, we've got Southampton. Um, Mark Hughes again came in at January last year, um, saved them. However, they came seventeenth, very close to go down. Um, and I think, I think you're starting to see the fact they sold so many players is starting to catch up with them. Um, when Pochettino was there, and then Kuman was there, and I think because they were st they were top managers, um, and although they sold so many of the players. The managers could get the best out of the current crop they had. Um, but I think now they've, they've changed their manager, I think, two or three times in the last couple of years. Like so many of these um, bottom clubs who are scared of relegation because of the money. And I think this year it'll, it'll finally catch up with them. I think they'll go down again. In 17th place, we've got Bournemouth. A side that many expect not even to stay up in their first season. So to get to their third season... Eddie Howe has done absolute wonders at that club. Um, obviously, many tip him to be a future England manager. But the problem is with Eddie Howe, he's only ever done it at Bournemouth. He went to Burnley for, I think, less than a year, I think it was. But I think they'll just have enough this season. Along with their manager, Eddie Howe, I think they'll just, just, just about stay up ahead of their South Coast rivals. In 16th, we have Wolverhampton Wanderers. You could be one of the most interesting clubs in that bottom half this season. Bought so many Portuguese players. Everybody's comparing them to Portugal. You've got the Jorge's Mendes factor. Everybody's saying he's running that club for, on his own. Who knows how they're going to play like. How Whether their players are going to settle. Could be very, very interesting. They haven't been in the... Obviously, they got relegated quite a number of seasons ago now. They haven't been back since. Had that double relegation. They've come back again. I'm really looking forward to them, actually. See how they play. Whether Ruben Neves... Can he be as good as he was in the Championship last year? Because it's such a massive step up. 
such a massive step up. You've seen so many players who are brilliant in the championship come up to the Premier League and just can't cut it. So whether he can will be very intriguing to see. The next two places involve the two promoted teams of last season. I hope that makes sense. In uh, Brighton and Huddersfield. Now the reason I've got them further up than uh, I think a lot of people is because again they're, they're settled teams. They've had that season in the Premier League now. They know what it's, they know what it's about. They know the crucial parts. And obviously they brought a couple of players in each. Um, I've no idea who they are. Again, they're foreigners. It'd be interesting to see how they, how good they are. But I think even with the current crop, I think they'll have enough. Um, like I said, I think I think the teams who have changed their manager quite often recently and have gone for um, a quite an older approach, except one team I haven't mentioned yet, I think will struggle this season. Um, in terms of obviously Mark Hughes. Javi Garcia obviously isn't one of those uh, old experienced managers in the Premier League. Um, but I think there's, there's wider factors there, and I think that's the reason, as I say, Watford will, will go down. But Brighton and Huddersfield, I think they'll have settled seasons again, a bit like Bournemouth had their second season. People weren't as interested, I don't think, in that second season for Bournemouth because they know what, they, what, what they're what they about. Um, the fact that they stayed up was a miracle in their first season anyway. But I think Brighton and Huddersfield will, will stay up this season. Um, having said all that, like I said at the start, I think the bottom 10... Still anybody could go down. I'm making these predictions right now, but things could happen. Players could go on strike. Players could get annoyed with somebody. Who knows? All, all manner of things. And then that could just blow the whole ship open. In 13th place, we have Fulham. Um, one of the promoted teams from this season. They're actually my, 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 my highest promoted team, actually, old Fulham. Um, obviously, they've got the massive signing of Seri. Um, who's ever, who everybody is looking forward to, um, and Ryan Sessegnon, the only player to um, get nominated for the Young PFA Player of the Year in the second division. Going to absolutely love to watch him play. Really, really highly rated. Absolutely was brilliant in the Championship last season. One of the main reasons Fulham went up through the playoffs. And I just think, I think because of those, because they've got quality. I look at that team and they've got, obviously, I hope, Seri, I hope he comes in. I hope he plays well. Um, as I say, Arsenal were linked to him back in uh, back last summer. Didn't come. But, uh, but I think they've just got that bit of quality just to, just to keep them up. Higher above the other teams I've mentioned. Um, and that's key. You have to have that bit of quality going forward. Um, you have to have that. You have to be able to score goals. I think in Sessegnon, obviously, I know he's a fullback, but he got a handful of goals last year and he's brilliant going forward. Seri, another midfielder. I think if he if he can control the game for Fulham, I think that's the reason they'll stay up. In 12th and 11th, we have Crystal Palace and Newcastle United, respectively. Palace, I mean, Roy Hodgson last season, he, he did not get the credit he deserved. I, I know he had a shocking time at England a shocking game against Iceland, and maybe that's what is counts count against him. But I mean, they had zero points when he came in. They had zero goals. He then came in. They had another couple of games. They got zero points and zero goals. Then all of a sudden, by February, they were safe. I mean, he broke numerous records, like man, just like Man City last season as well. Um, I think he's just gone totally unnoticed. And I think, I think he's a manager. I, I think. Last season was one of those seasons where I think a lot of the old managers like your Pardews, your Mark Hughes, Tony Pulises, I think they, I think it finally caught up with them. But I think what Roy Hodgson did last season and the quality that Palace have got, they're a lot better side than those first few games of last season anyway. Obviously they had um, De Boer come in who just tried to play a way that Palace couldn't play with the players they have. But like Fulham... They've got that real quality in Zahar, um, who was brilliant last season. And I think if he stays with Palace again, I think they will stay up. Um, and I think, again, there'll be a few more points ahead of ahead of the rest. Having said that, if Roy Hodgson can't, can't replicate what he did last season, they could easily struggle. Um, although Palace has seen, last couple of years, they seem to be the team where even though they've 
they've had a better players in their in and around them. They still seem to have struggled, so that can always come into play. But I think they will stay up this season. I think they'll um be near the top half of the table. With Newcastle again, Rafa Benitez. As long as he stays there, I don't see him going down. He's absolutely brilliant for that club. Even though he's got no money to go with, what he's been doing with the players he's got has been brilliant. And I think they'll just get nearly just miss out on the top 10. I think they'll get 11th. Um, having said that, if Rafa Benitez, if he's not happy, uh, he suddenly has a strop and he just says, look, I'm too good for this. I don't want it. And he leaves. Newcastle are in the mire, mate. They are in the mire. But if he stays, I think they'll, I think they'll be solid. I think they will be solid. I think potentially, I know I said bottom at uh, bottom ten or could go down. <clears throat> I think if he stays, I don't think I don't think they'll have a chance of going down to be honest. But but anyway, they're in eleventh place. Right, we're finally into the top ten. And in tenth position is Burnley. Who had an absolutely phenomenal season last season, got seventh, nobody expected it whatsoever. The only thing this season is, is Europa League. How that will affect them. How far they will go, how seriously they will take it. But the thing is about Burnley, they're a solid team. They they put men behind the ball, they're organised. And in that sense, they, they may not use as much energy as, let's say, a top team would, like an Arsenal last season who... Try to split their teams. And they had the Premier League team. They had a Europa League team. Burnley could potentially get away with with playing a lot of their their, their better players in the Europa League because they just they, they don't use up as much energy as maybe other teams do. Um, so it'd be really it'd be intriguing to see how how old um, Sean Dice takes to the Europa League. Really, I think he might go for it. Um, because if and even if he goes for it, they may not get top ten, but they're not going to go down. Um, they'll easily. I mean, Turf Moor is an absolute fortress for them, and I think they'll easily. I mean, look, if you go out in the group stages, you're in what December, plenty of time to get a few more points on the board to stay up. So I think there's no problems at all there. In ninth, we've got West Ham, who are in. Oh, I think they're in for a quite an exciting season, um, and anything can happen with West Ham. They brought in Pellegrini, who was an attacking manager for Man City, won the league with Man City. They brought in attacking players like Felipe Anderson, Brazilian Flair, Hernandez, Willy. He didn't really hit the form that people were expecting last season. But I think with the players he's got now, Chat Wiltshire as well, I think he'll have a lot better service this season. And I think he could be in for a few goals. But the way Pellegrini plays, you know he's going to play attacking, attacking football. So I think West Ham will be really, really good to watch this season. And I don't think they'll have any chance of going down. Not like, or again, not like last season, like so many other teams. I think I think they'll finally prove that they're a Premier League team. In 8th and 7th, we've got Leicester and Everton, who are basically the best of the rest. Obviously, Leicester won the league unbelievably a few years ago. Sold a few of their players. Still got the, a good chunk of them. Have bought... I've bought in the window. They've got Harry Maguire, who's been an absolute, well, it's been a revelation, really. Um, and I think they're just, I think they're obviously them and Everton as well. Everton have spent big again in Richarlison for 15 million. And they're not going to break into the top six, either of those teams. But no chance of going down. And I think, again, they'll have, they'll have solid good seasons for them. And to be honest, at the moment, there's not much else they can do, really. Um... Their only hope really is your Spurs and your Chelsea's, hint, hint, will really, really drop. Um, but I don't think they will that much. Um, and I think, yeah, Everton, just, just, just ahead of Leicester in seventh place. Right, now for the top six. Now for the six big teams. In sixth, and I may be a little bit biased here, I've gone for Tottenham Hotspur. I think, first of all, I think they might have a little bit of a slow start to the season, considering the work the players they had at the World Cup, especially they had so many England players there, and they're all they're all first teamers for for Spurs, and I think that will count against them. I think moving to the new stadium, 
They haven't bought anybody, which is really surprising. Even even like a cheap deal on the side. I mean, Levy, Levy Daniel Levy must be pulling his hair out. I know he doesn't like to spend big, but I'm sure he's a wheeler and a dealer. He hasn't bought one player. So I think I think they'll struggle. I think they'll um I think they'll be the uh, the worst of the best. If you see what I mean. Next up, in fifth, a Chelsea. Um, Chelsea are a funny old team. Obviously, another team that just love to change their manager. Brought in Sarri this season, who nobody knows really how he's going to do. He had a he was brilliant for Napoli, um, but he's he came into the game really really late. He wasn't a professional footballer. He didn't come into the management business until quite late. He's only really managed Napoli and then a couple of lower Serie A teams. So to be ex- to come into Chelsea, you'll be expected to win trophies from the off. Can he win a domestic trophy? And I think the problem is with Chelsea as well. I think they've got so many players who, who could potentially leave at the moment. You've got Hazard, you've got Courtois, you've got Willian. I mean, if even one or two of those players leave, you've got to remember the uh, the window is only open for us to August 9th, I believe it is. Day before the season starts on the Thursday. The uh, the window for all the other clubs is still, I mean European clubs, is still the end of August. So if a player leaves in those 20 days and the team can't, and a Premier League team can't replace them, it could be very, very difficult up until January. So that's why I've got uh, Chelsea and Spurs in 5th and 6th. Right, we are now heading into the Champions League places. And in 4th, We've got Man United. Now, at the moment, anything could happen with United. Mourinho seems to be having a strop every five minutes. Is he faking it? Is he not? Is he just generally not happy? Who knows? But, I mean, anything could happen with them. They were second last year on 81 points, which for a few seasons in the Premier League could have easily won it. But it was just Man City were just so, so good. But they still got loads and loads of stick, old United. And look, ever since Fergie left, it's always been about oh, it's the way we play. We're boring, this, that, the other. I mean, come on. But is it going to be third season syndrome again for Jose Mourinho? It could easily be. He could easily just by November, even October, November, just say forget it. I'm just and uh, I mean by October, November. Will the players, can they keep going? Will the, will the hierarchy just say, look, we've just had enough. See you later. And then they've got like, they've got some great attacking players in Sanchez, Lukaku, Marshall if he stays. I mean, nobody knows. Just nobody knows at the minute how they're going to do. Just nobody knows at the moment what situation they're in. They're hoping to at least get one player in, or one more player in, I should say. They've got that Dallow guy for just under 20 mil. Fred, I've never I've never seen him play. I don't know how good he is, but, I mean, if they don't sort of hit the ground running, if when they come in and the fans start getting on the back, oh, it could all be a piss off in the beer, I tell you. But anyway, that's why I'm in fourth. But they could easily, easily come second if they get it together. But at the moment, I just don't think they will. In third, and probably quite surprising to many, is going to be Arsenal. My team. Now, it's a new era at the Arsenal. Unai Emery has come in. And what I've loved about Emery when he's come in is he's settled a ship straight away. He's obviously sold Jack Wiltshire. He's just said, look, he's had a frank conversation and just basically told him, look, you're not going to be in my plans much this season. If you have, if you, if you go and you find another club, then I'm happy for you to go. And that's what he's done. He's gone to West Ham. Good luck to him. I love old Jack. And now he's brought in a couple of players, in particular Leno, who I haven't obviously much, I haven't watched much play. I haven't watched him much, um, but I heard he's very good. He's still relatively young. In terms of the goalkeeping age. And the big one for me is Lucas Torreira. 
I think he could be brilliant this season. He's exactly what we need. And I think going forward as well, Aubameyang, Lacazette, I think they could be the two best strikers in the league. I think Aubameyang could absolutely light up this league this season. I think he could easily get golden boot. He's got pace. He finishes well. I mean, he was unbelievable even in the second half of last season. He's only been us. He's only been here since January. That's why I've got him in third. Maybe too high up, but I do think they'll get top four this season. Um, I mean, it can't be worse than last season. Last season was so bad for so many reasons. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be back, back, back with the big boys properly. Because we were no, we weren't even. I mean, you could even class as a top six last season. It was a top five Arsenal and Burnley because we were that bad. Anyway, top two. Who well, I think have been many people's top two this season. Liverpool and Man City. For the champions, I've gone for Manchester City. I think I think they're just too good. I don't, I know they haven't look. They can't strength strengthen that much. They brought in Mares. <laughs> seems to have got injured straight away. But I think they were just so good last season. And the key thing is, is that I don't think there's been a way to stop them yet. I don't think a manager has worked it out yet. And I think that's why they'll win it. Um, Liverpool have obviously gotten a few players who they desperately needed. But I don't think they'll hit the ground running straight away. I think it will take them a little bit of time to adapt. Once they do get going, I think they'll, they're really, really good players. Especially, obviously, Alisson, who's, who's the big one for them. But I just don't think they'll have enough to challenge. I think Man City could easily walk it again. And then you've got maybe the next five or four, depending on how some teams play. I think they'll just slug it out, really. I think, again, it'll be closer to second, third and fourth. And it will be to the top team. I just don't think. I think they'll be the first team, Man City, to retain the Premier League in over a decade. And I say good luck to them. I think they were brilliant last season. I know people go on about how much they've spent, but in the two games I watched against Arsenal, well, three games I watched against Arsenal, including the League Cup final, that first one especially, is they were just better than us. So many times, you know, we've I've said, oh, dodgy refereeing decisions, but that time was was one of the first times I've seen a side completely outplay us. And really, and you know, I think it was like a 3-0 win. I can't remember if it was home or away. But they were just brilliant. They were just so much... They were just one step... They weren't even one step ahead of us. They were two, three, four steps ahead of us. Um, and I haven't seen a side like that play against us for... And look, we've played crap in a lot of our games. But we played all right that game. But Man City were just on another level. So I think they'll, they'll win the league this season. Anyway, that's my predictions. If you got this far, then you deserve something special. Um, I doubt many people will. I've got another video coming up. Fantasy Premier League. A bit of a twist. I'm hoping it will come out well. I'll hopefully be here at the weekend. Depending on how long it takes me to edit this. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So, anyway. Thanks for watching. Even if you did get this far. And I'll see you later. Cheers.